is the death of relationship dumbassification. A thought provoking conversation with the voice of reason. An exploration into why you and your girl just can't relate. The world is tuned in to the voice of reason. Blowing up the foxhole every Thursday evening. If your man is tripping, the talk is over before you leave. Maybe y'all can make it work it. If not, he can tell you exactly how to tell him to kick rocks. Intelligence with lots of comedy. It's not your average show. It's so brilliant. The voice of reason on foxhole radio. Yo, one, two, one, two. The voice of reason is in the building. You know how we do over here. I'm telling you all right now. Get to the phone lines. It's important. Tonight's topic is going to be absolutely bananas. 877-2106-106 is the number to dial. Zoe Williams, Voice of Reason, Foxhole Radio, Sirius 106, XM 149. Tonight's topic, cyber infidelity for sale. The Ashley Madison discussion. I have the founder on the phone, and before I bring him in, he's going to be answering your questions. I'm just telling you that right now. If you want to get at this, brother, about his website. A lot of people out there don't know about this website. Well, I'm here to tell you right now. The AshleyMadison.com website is a niche social networking site that is geared towards facilitating infidelity. It is a website for married couples who are tired of the monogamous monotony in their lives. They roll over at night and see their wives or see their husband and say, look at that bag of potatoes right there. God, I'm through with this dude or this battle axe, <laughs> right? And he's created a website. A lot of people are appalled. I mean, absolutely flabbergasted that he, Noel Biederman, would create a site that would facilitate infidelity and adultery. 877-2106-106 is the number to dial. Cyber infidelity for sale is tonight's topic. I urge you all to reach out and call. Now, before I bring them on, I still want to talk to you guys about uh, Haiti. I said I would continue to do this. It's very important that you guys... Man, it's not going to go away in a month, in a week, in two weeks, uh, two months. Uh, the people of Haiti need our support, and they need it on a continuous basis. So please, please, please continue to give. Please share your – I mean, I know we in a recession, but continue to do that. So with that said, I just want to throw some questions out. Should Tiger Woods have used AshleyMadison.com? Would he still be in the same mess if he did, right? Or would he have been caught sooner? Is it safe? I mean, the world is getting smaller because of technology. Is it safe to go online and look for, for a woman, right? Now, I know the Internet offers anonymity, but is it real anonymity when all your information is always available? Tiger Woods can't send a text message. That text message, it's there forever. Your, your, your cell phone carrier has it. You go to a website, you sign in, there's cookies on your computer. So what, what do we do? How do we get out of this? Right? What are, I'm not even going to go there yet. Let me do this. Let me, because I, I just want to bring him in right now. The dude, uh, Biederman, are you there? Noel Biederman, are you in the building? I'm here, though. Thanks for, thanks for. Oh, jeez. You know motherfuckers are angry with you. Yeah, you know, I think they're angry with their lives. I think they're they're taking it out on me and, and, and Ashley Madison, but you know, blaming an inanimate object for your for your marital problems, that that's just ridiculous. Wow. So you discovered that thirty percent of men and women on single dating sites were actually attached and lying about their status. Yeah, correct? that's exactly right. Every one of your callers that, you know, has been on a single dating site and end up meeting someone who's already in a relationship, unbeknownst to them, they should call in because it was happening in droves. It's not happening nearly as often anymore because 
Ashley Madison exists, but dial back a couple of years ago, and you couldn't make it through a quote-unquote single dating site without running into some married guy. That, that was just uh, the lay of the land. So what happens when they call you infidelities pimp? Do you yeah, believe no, that you're infidelities pimp? Well, you know, th those are the titles, right? Infidelity Pimp, King of Infidelity. People believe I'm promoting it. I think that's what gets everyone so riled up, is that it's bad enough this service exists that people use my service, or whether it's Facebook, or everyone knows presidents, athletes, entertainers, their neighbors all cheat, but I'm out there talking about it. But what I'm really trying to do is just start the conversation, not have the last word, which is monogamy is dead. we we got to stop banging our heads against the wall and, and come to a reality, which it just doesn't work. And so what do we want to do about it? Wow. So, really quickly, for our listeners, why don't you share some of your thoughts on monogamy? I think yeah. a lot of your thoughts are in alignment with what I think. So, but yeah, I, I think if you look around the world, though, if you if you canvas other creeds and cultures and concepts, you will get a real handle on what really goes on. Which is, it's only in America where we treat infidelity as this this devil. In other places, when people stray, they tend to take a look in the mirror and say, "You know what? I was part to blame." okay, I still love this person, they still love me, we have a family to raise, we have economic situations, and they get on with their lives. They understand that dalliance. And so their divorce rates are so much lower than in America. Families stay together, and yet their infidelity rates, at least purported ones anyways, are so much higher. Brazil, so, Japan, France, this happens all over the world. So let me ask you this. Let me, yeah. I hate to cut you off, but let me just ask you this. Would you say that the American view of the ideal marriage and relationship is an unrealistic one? It's unrealistic and it's archaic. We have this, you know, ill-conceived concept that marriage has never evolved before. There's only one kind of marriage, heterosexual, you know, a monogamous marriage, and that's nonsense. At one point in time, men had multiple wives. Even right now, the president of South Africa has multiple wives. Polygamy is very common in many parts of the world. It just, It is a fact of life. It's just, you know, no longer popular in most of America. At another point in time, marriage was by arrangement. You didn't marry for love. Your parents chose your partner because... Right. You know, Here's four, here, here, it's here. only really recently, though, we started mm. marrying for love. And you know what the consequence of that is? People is break it? up. Because, because <laughs> love tends to change and fade and it takes a lot of work to persevere through a marriage. And so you're just as likely now to end up divorced as you are to stay together. And so there's no, it's not a, a surprise to me that 40% of children being born in America right now are being born to single moms. There's a lot of women out there who say, I want the child... I just don't want the husband, and you know, can you blame them? Wow. So, if if you're, because uh, I, I I read the first part of your book. Unfortunately, I got it today, so I wasn't able to uh, go all the way into it. But it sounds like you're saying we need to move away from uh, the monogamous construct because We're doing it's it, right? it's, ha it's happening anyway. There's more and more couples who are in open relationships. You know, they call them swingers, call them people who are a little, you know, in, in a different community. There's more and more people who will define themselves as polyamorous. There's more right. and more people who are in same-sex relationships. America lags behind all of Europe, Canada, other places that recognize those unions. Let's just be honest. They just, we really do lag behind the rest of the world when it comes to notions of our matrimony. We're just, we're a little archaic. But no, aren't you in a monogamous marriage? Listen, I'm not trying to change anyone's moral compass. I also grew up in a culture and in a community where heterosexual monogamous marriages were kind of the standard. What I did, though, is I got married later in life. I kind of said, you know what, I'm ready now. I'm ready now, I think, to settle down and have a family, and that's why I chose to get married. And, yes, my partner said, listen, we're going to be faithful to one another, right? And so I said, fine, that's the deal. And so, yes. But it I sounds mean, like a contradiction, Noel. No, it sounds like, not, come on. Here, here's the one thing, though. Here's what I do say, and I mean it. I don't know what I would do if I found myself like 20 million other Americans in a sexless marriage. If I woke up one day and found, I said, oh, my God, I haven't had sex in two months, and I wanted to have sex with my, with my wife, and all of a sudden that wasn't an option to me, I don't think I would stay faithful. I really I confess that all the time. I don't know what I would do. I, just, I can't imagine being in a sexless relationship because, to me, sex is the same need as, as oxygen to breathe and water to drink. It, it's part of who I am. Wow. Let, let me just do this because we got callers lining up to get at you, Noel. Maybe they're trying to support me, though. I don't know. You never know. Sometimes you have some real thinkers uh, as listeners. I agree. I agree. Because, you know, some of the things you say are, you know, I'm in alignment with. I've, I've already said that marriage and monogamy is, is an archaic belief system. It's like human beings, man. We, we're constantly evolving, but some of our belief systems, you know, are old and archaic and need to be updated. If it was a software, we would be running Windows 3.1 right now. Easy. Well so well. let me do it this way. Patrick from Tennessee. 
Voice of Reason time. Let me hear what you got to say about this, man. What's going on, y'all? Uh, I'm good, sir. How you doing, Patrick? I mean, I mean I'm doing all right, man. I mean, I've, I've been in a, a monogamous relationship for, for 15 years now. I mean, it, it works for me. The, the, the thing is, the, the problem with relationship is, well, well, from, from, from a man's perspective, is the women is too hard to deal with. I got enough problems dealing with that one. I don't need three other three other problems. Right, right, right. The maintenance issue, right. <laughs> right. So I mean, I mean, I, you know, when I was single, I never, you know, never lied, you know, never told them you was to have them painted the picture that you was the only one. Never did that. They always said, well, look, I got, you know, it's more, it's more besides you. But in their minds, they always thought that they was the one. And I keep telling them you're not. So I mean. I understand what you're saying. My Let man. me just well, wait a minute, Patrick. You've never cheated on your wife at never all. Never cheated on my wife. Fifteen years. I'm 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 37. I've been married since I was 22. Wow. Never Have you ever cheated on my wife? You married young, brother. You you sure? Yeah, man. No doubt. Mm -hmm. I mean, okay. I I mean, I ain't got I ain't got nothing, I ain't got a lot of kicking, man. Hey, well, you from the volunteer state, so I believe you. I'm from Chattanooga, so I understand where you coming from, homie. Thanks yeah, for reaching yeah, I, out. I, I, <laughs> Yeah, no, I, listen, I, I think Patrick, first of all, it's commendable that he's in a happy marriage, and that, that's great for him. I think the situation is, you know, not everyone, um, you know, makes it through 15 years. But here's what I would say. It doesn't make them bad people. It doesn't mean they're not great leaders, great athletes, great entertainers, great friends, great family members. It means there's something going on in their personal lives. And so, yes, a lot of men find it really hard to balance a mistress, but one of the secret successes of Ashley Madison is there's a lot of married women on there, and so their expectation is the same as the married guys. They're looking for liaisons, they're looking for hookups, and then they're both going back to their family. So there's not a lot of maintenance going on at Ashley. Right, and, 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 and according to some of the research I've pulled up, 70% of the 5 million plus people, on 5 million people is nothing to sneeze at. 70% of that 5 million are men. Most of the people on your website are from California, and but that leaves 30% women. So a lot of people out there, you know, they're trying to bang. And this, let me just say this, and you maybe can speak to this, Noel. The hypocrisy of America. We like to promote a squeaky clean image. Take Tiger Woods. <laughs> you know, you can't get an Accenture sponsorship, right? You can't get that sponsorship without uh, being presented as this perfect image. He's a husband, he's a champion, he's a model this, he's a model that. This is why I say Americans are deluded into a fantasy kind of life. You expect to have the perfect, uh, the perfect marriage, the perfect husband, the perfect everything. And the reality is, if you put a telescope on anybody's life, you're going to come up with some kind of dirt. Am I lying, No. You're 100% correct. And I think you also have to have some understanding of people who are in the you know, kind of industries you're mentioning. They, they truthfully, A, have taken a lot of risks to get where they're going to be, right? You, you're one of those kind of people. It, it takes a lot to kind of climb a mountain and become really successful. And so risk takers tend to think, you know what, this has paid off for me professionally. I can take some risks in my personal life. And I'm also, I made a Teflon. It's not going to stick to me. We tend to be wrong about it. They tend to be found out, and, uh, you know, then you have to deal with the consequences. But also, you know, people in positions of influence are, are constantly being, you know, uh, saddled up to. And so, you know, temptation is a tricky thing, and no matter who you are, you tend to overestimate how good you are at resisting temptation. And so if you're constantly faced with it, you know, you're just human, you're fallible, and you're going to give in from time to time. Wow. So let me just do this really quickly. D from ATL. Anthony from Ohio, Eve from Cali, hold on the line. We're about to make a take a quick break. I want you guys to reach out. We got all the time in the world. 877-2106-106 is the number to dial. Zoe Williams, cyber infidelity for sale. Noel Biederman, we'll be back in a quick second. Peace. Just let it marinate. Let it simmer. One of the classic songs about infidelity, Shirley Murdoch, As We Lay. Ladies and gentlemen, this isn't something new. AshleyMadison.com did not invent infidelity. I've heard Noel say that on numerous, uh, you know, interviews. And, I mean, he didn't invent it. And this is what I hate about the hypocrisy. 
people are appalled that he is commoditizing infidelity. He's making money off of it. But at the end of the day, somebody's got to. But wait, Noel. What you set yourself up for this question. But there's a lot of sexual deviant shit going on. Why don't you make a niche site for that? There's a lot of motherfuckers going to Taiwan to fuck little boys. Why don't you put a site together for that? Hmm? Just because there's a market, does that mean you should create a site for it to commoditize it? Noel, speak to me. You know, Zoe, ultimately, you have to uh, obey the law. And so there's no law. We're, we're not painting people with scarlet letters anymore when they when they commit adultery. It's just it's part of the landscape. We came to accept that the same way we came to accept that, you know, alcohol killed 10,000 Americans from disease and addiction this year alone, but we let people drink because prohibiting it doesn't work. And if they want to drive cars fast, bungee jump, smoke cigarettes, you know, that's the way it goes. So I built a totally legal product. I should have the right to do it. And thank God I live in a country like America where I can do it, right? Because if you were anywhere else, they'd chop your hands off. Exactly. <laughs> what does your wife think of this shenanigan? You know, or is she, she happy to, that the check's coming she in? She gets to live in a big house and drive a nice car. And there it is. And see her husband on magazine covers and talk on TV. And here's the biggest truth, though. She knows what a dedicated dad I am, what a great husband I am. If anyone on the planet should know what it takes to be in a successful marriage, because I talk the topic five times a day, all day, it should be me. If I can't pull it off, there's no hope for anybody. But w now you're just the perfect relationship, dude. Come on. You I, I'm a pretty good husband. Listen, you know, I, I, in I, your I book, Noel, in your book, you say that no one gets more play than the powerful and the successful. And right. I know you're making millions hand over foot. So you can't tell me that women ain't tossing it to you right now. The more powerful you get, the more money you get. You're going to use your site one day, aren't you? <laughs> I will never use my service. It, it, you know, that, that is not my plan. It's not a personal playground to spend tens of millions of dollars building something to create that. That would be a bit ridiculous. But I, I will say this. If my relationship went cold on me, I don't know that I would just walk away. I don't know that divorce is something I could handle. I love my kids too much. I'm, I'm committed to raising them, the economic situation. I think I would try and find a way forward, even if our sex life wasn't working. But what about the argument? Them. What about the argument out there that says you're helping to rip people's families and relationships the exact apart? Opposite, though. The exact, we're the biggest marriage preservation tool on the planet. Say it think again. About it. We're the biggest marriage preservation tool on the planet. There are so many people who email me every day saying this. I don't get hate mail, though. I get fan mail. Thank you, Mr. Beamer, for building the service. I love and cherish my family. I care so much about my partner, my kids, my home, my, my job, but I couldn't concentrate anymore. I haven't had sex in two years, two months, whatever. I went on your Louis Dix called you? I, I met someone who had the exact oh. same situation as me, and you know what? I'm a better partner now. I'm a better parent, a better boss, a better employee, a better friend. The stress in my life has been removed. Why do you think? In every city in America, there's strip clubs, there's massage parlors, go on Craigslist, there's S. Who do you think is visiting all these people for cathartic needs? Married men, let's be honest. We have to get real in this discussion or we're not going to get anywhere. So your book, Cheaters Prosper, right? Yep. And tell us the subtitle one more time. How Infidelity Will Save the Modern Marriage. It's happening right before our eyes. Wow. I'm the first guy calling it out. Wow. Callers. If you disagree, now's the time to get at Noel. Daniel from ATL, you're in the voice of reason. Let me hear what you have to say. Well, uh, I'm not going to. I think this is a great platform to talk about relationships, and it is time that we consider alternatives. I myself have two wives and about to take on a third. But with my situation, um, it requires me to have a whole other level of integrity, responsibility to inspire professional women to sign on to something, and it's a lot bigger than sex. When I was young and immature, I thought it was about sex, but it's about building family, power, and leaving a legacy. And whereas everybody else getting their ass kicked financially, um, my family is financially strong because we have um, more of a platform to harness more wealth and security. And, Wait a minute. Did you say you were calling? Let, Daniel, did you say you were calling from ATL or Dubai? Uh, I have a house in Atlanta, and I live in uh, West Africa, too. Oh, okay, because I hey, come on now. You got some polygamous movement going on. Is that cool for you? Uh, yeah. There it is. I mean, okay, 75% of the world is polygamous. Um, the American concept 
is old, dead, and it's contradictory. Everybody in the Bible, there, everybody want to quote and look. That's true. And they all were polygamists. Very and all. true. Moses That's himself true. had two wives. People just quote the Ten Commandments to me all the time, and That's I remind true. them that Moses had two wives, and that adultery is defined really clearly. Sex with other married people, concubines, is totally okay. Well, listen, they would also argue that people used to uh, use uh, stones as punishment, and people aren't doing that anymore. Are you saying no, we this, should oh, oh, bring the stone is, back? What I'm saying is, of the Ten Commandments, only two are modern-day laws. The Ten Commandments can't be our morality guider. It mentions nothing about rape. It mentions nothing about child molestation. It's an antiquated notion, and so if you want to gravitate yourself towards it, I'm not going to try and persuade you otherwise. I'm not going to reset your moral compass. But don't tell me that's the defining way of morality. That's just ridiculous. In 2010, in a digital world, we have to redefine what's right and wrong. And right and wrong to me is about loneliness and feeling, uh, you know, alone or, or having needs not being met. That, that's suffering, and people don't need to suffer. Well, thank you, Daniel, for the call. Eve from California. I need to know what you think and feel about this. Don't hold anything back. If you want to go at Noel's neck, here's the chance. Okay, I'm not going to hold it back, but no, I actually agree with you. Thank you, Eve. And that's because we're on our way to Texas, me and the kid, you know, he dis he agrees, but somewhat disagrees with my belief, which is, from a woman's perspective, I want to be with my son's father in a married relationship. However, I know that as soon as we marry, then I can't be... I can't travel with the kid to Texas. My, he's not here with us, and he didn't want me to go on the trip. So I'm confused because I can't just look at one man's face 24/7. Wow! So you're 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 pa polyamorous, you know uh, the the flip of it. The, fl but the I flip of but I'm not but I'm not in a sexual relationship with the kid. We're friends. <clears throat> well, even if you're not having, you know, sex, there's still an intimacy you're exchanging. And especially exactly. if people are keeping that intimacy from their other partner or whatever, that's a level of infidelity. I'm sorry. That's just, I mean, cyber affairs are the growing, you know, space of infidelity. If you come home and find out your partner's on Facebook or my site chatting away with a past lover or a future lover or whatever it ends up being and hiding it from you and, and basically telling that person you love them, you want them, that's just as being as unfaithful, truthfully, as getting into bed with someone. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, if you... Thank you very much for the call. Uh, listen, if you have any questions that you want me to ask uh, Noel here, please, if you're near a computer and you feel like tweeting, get at me. I'm at Zoe Williams or at Foxhole Radio. At Zoe Williams or at Foxhole Radio or just Foxhole, at Foxhole. And let us get your questions in because we, we really want to grill my man. I'm sorry, Noel, but we want to <laughs> grill you. So we can answer a lot of these questions that a lot of people didn't even know that Ashley Madison, uh, they thought it was a real person. They thought it was a woman. And it was like, well, you going to have her that, on? That was, that was intended, right? Because NoelBiederman.com was going to scare the women away. And so I, from day one... Noel Biederman. <laughs> it sounds really wanted, wild. Wanted, I really wanted women to feel comfortable on the service. Everything I did from the design to the commercials I made, all the marketing was about women come here for a safe, secure you know, uh, affair, if this is what you're going to pursue. Don't do it in the workplace. You'll lose your job. Don't, you know, go on a single day and pretend that you're not married. Don't go and have an affair with your, you know, your friend's husband. Those kinds of things are just going to blow up in your face. Have it here where it's safe and secure. I mean, and let me just say this, Noel. The website is quite provocative. We have a soccer mom on her knees. Well, Getting no, ready to blow it down. It's a, it's a liaison about to take place in the hotel room. That's our infamous billboard that we put up right in Times Square. And after three days, the manager of the hotel... They told you to take it down. They to told you to down. take it yeah, down. Yeah, yeah threatened to burn it down. So, we, so we, are you having a difficult time with advertising and putting people on? And, and America still believes that they can sit there and say, you know, what's the most popular film of our time? Well, it's changing, but uh, the most romantic film of our time, Titanic. What's the story in Titanic? A woman cheating on her fiancé. What's the most popular book of our time? Bridges in Madison County. A woman cheating on her husband when he's wow. away. What's the one of the most popular shows on TV? Desperate Housewives. Women cheating all over the place. It's wow. okay for Hollywood to talk about it, fictionalize it, glorify it. But as soon as someone wants to talk about it as a real service, no advertising. It's off ESPN. But that's We're what I mean. On the Super Bowl. It's ridiculous. And this is what I mean about the, the, the fantasy that America sells its citizenship. Correct. 
the the reality of the situation is America's uh, Americans would rather not talk about it. Have you ever watched this? We want to do it. We want to participate in it, but we don't want to talk about it. The truth of the matter is, you saw a market here, an economy sitting here just waiting to be structured. You created a structure. Now this economy exists for you. Five million people. Like I said, that's nothing to laugh at. That's nothing to sneeze at. Anthony from Ohio, you're in the voice of reason. I need to know what you think. How you doing, Zoe, man? I appreciate the show and everything, man. You be talking about some real shit. You got real people on there to talk about real issues. Let's get active then, bro. Dr. Dr. No, (laughs) I'm not going to say I disagree. I agree with how genius he is to capitalize on other people's imperfections. Yeah, if he's I that big-headed my, mouse. Yeah, if I could have if I could have thought of it myself to do it, I'd have tried to do the shit. But hell, he got to it first. Right. Just like, just like when you had Pimpin' Ken on there talking about his book. I agree with Pimpin' Ken. Whatever you can do to try to get ahead in life, go ahead and do it. If it's not his fault that people like fucking other people, it wow. ain't his fault. I don't cheat on my wife. I prefer watching pornography. I'm not going to go to this website and use it, but at the same time, there are people that have to have sex. And it is a necessity. It's a necessity in a marriage. You know, if I wasn't having sex with my wife, I would completely lose control after some point. You know what I'm saying? So I'm glad his website is there because if, if you if you can cheat and not get caught, hell, why not? He just invented a way to do it and not get caught. Wow. Hey, Anthony, I appreciate the call. Let me move to the next caller. Tina, Michigan, I need to know what you think. Talk to Noel. Hey, Noel. Hey, Hi, you Tina. pretty much hit it right on the head. It's um, the realisticness of preserving of the family when you have other responsibilities of a spouse and children and um, giving of that um monogamy for years and years and years is not realistic to the human nature. So it is what it is. I have to agree with what he's done. Um, it's real. It's it's logical. It's um, The United States really just has to change its way of thinking about marriage. I've seen too many people whose marriages, like, explode because of little things, and then right. the families are torn apart and the children are just a wreck. If they could just kind of, you know, get through it and not make it be such a big deal looked at the spouse as, you're my friend, you're my partner that's raising these children, there's something special about that, take that, and don't don't have me be your 100%. It's not wow. logical to be that 100% for somebody for your whole life. Wow, wow, wow. Thank you so very I, much for I, the call, I Tina. Your, I love your listeners, though. Hey, it, it, hey Sirius Satellite hey. Radio, man, the listenership is very listeners. intelligent. They, there was a report out on it, but let me continue to go in through a, a few more callers really quickly. And, and before I do that, your book pointed out something uh, that was in alignment with what Tina was saying, and we'll try to get back to it. We have a, uh, a tweet here uh, from Jacoby Walker. He's on our Twitter page, on the Foxhole, at Foxhole Twitter page. He says, for Noel, so how would you feel if your wife cheated on you? Would you be upset? Would you be disappointed? Yeah, we, we talked about it earlier. I would be devastated, but what I wouldn't do is blame an inanimate object. It wouldn't be a website's fault. It wouldn't be a hotel room's fault. It wouldn't even be her lover's fault. I wouldn't blame him. I, I ultimately don't even think I'd blame my wife. I would take a long look in the mirror and say, how did I fail my relationship? How did I not understand what she needed. How did I not allow the communication to take place to get the sex going? Whatever it was, I failed it. She wouldn't have cheated unless I wasn't there for her. And so that's the big problem out there. It's not. But wait a minute, Noel. Wait. I agree with everything you're saying except for one thing. You cannot say the internet is an inanimate object because it does influence people. We put to, we craft content, we put it on there, and that content but, affects but the really way think, people think. It's a part of the media. Really That's just like saying the television is an inanimate object. Listen, though, the images listen. and the sounds that come across the television affect the I way mean, people see themselves. Come on now. It's, people don't see my TV commercials and go, oh, I'm going to have an affair now. That's a great idea. That's ridiculous. I let them know about my service. My service is never busier than after Father's Day, Mother's Day, Valentine's Day, New Year's. You know why? That's a time when expectation was out there. It doesn't get met, and you know what? They've had enough, and they log into my service. I can't influence people to have affairs. That's ridiculous. Their lives lead them down this path. What I can do is tell them, hey, if you're going to have it, don't do it in a place where single people congregate, or don't do it in the office and risk your job. 
do it in this community. They're all like-minded adults. They're all in the same boat. They'll understand where you're coming from, and you'll find success. That's what I do. Wow. Uh, my producer just handed me a note. She wants to know, when women, when men cheat, a lot say, a lot of men say it has nothing to do with love or their mate. In other words, a man is usually just trying to get a piece of snatch without getting caught. What are the things that make women cheat? So this is the incredible thing about Ashley Madison, right? We're like a sociology experiment on steroids, and here's what I mean. <laughs> All the research on infidelity to date is by these psychologists and social workers who, for the most part, are talking to people who are unfaithful after the fact. They're probably in marriage counseling trying to reconcile, and so they have different takes on what brought them there. We're just fly on the wall at the genesis of infidelity. These people are self-publishing, to your point. They're creating content on their own, writing profiles, saying, here, here's who I am. Here's why I'm here. Here's what I'm looking for. And I'll tell you, women come there for the same reason over and over again. They have been forgotten in their marriage. No one pays attention to them anymore, brings them flowers, tells them they're beautiful when they change their hair, their appearance, the whole thing. They're totally neglected. And once, they weren't. They were once an object of desire. They were once pursued and wooed. Okay, and okay, Noel, I hate to cut you off, but we got to take a quick break. I didn't mean to break up your filibuster, <laughs> but I had to. So just hold on one second. Uh, Dee Dee from ATL, Andre from New Orleans, Robert from Cali. Hold on the line. We're about to take a quick break. Voice of Reason, Zoe Williams, Noel Biederman. What is it called tonight? Cyber Infidelity for Cell. Please reach out to us and let us know what you think. If you want to talk to Noel, the number is 877-2-106-106. I'll be back in a quick second. Peace. You, me, and he. James M. Tume. Go get this record. It's a classic record. It's called You, Me, and He. We're talking to Noel Biederman of AshleyMadison.com, the founder of an infidelity site. He's promoting it. He's making money. It's a niche, you know, a niche social networking site. Um, Noel Biederman is also the author of a book called Cheaters Prosper, How Infidelity Will Save the Modern Marriage. I mean, we were going to do a show. Uh, coming up sometime soon called uh, is your mistress the peacemaker in your house now as we've seen uh, on a lot of uh, I mean you can YouTube Noel and Ashley Madison and you'll see a lot of his uh, interviews from the view from Tyra Banks all of these different places where you know you'll hear people have testimony talking about or making testimony talking about how the fact that they could go out and have sec uh, extra marital affairs with other people brings a certain level of peace to their house in the sense that they're not complaining about sex anymore. They're not complaining about getting it. They're getting it on the side from their maintenance man or their cleanup woman. I mean, it's crazy. Now, Noel's book explores the descent of modern marriage, which is crazy to me that he is married in a monogamous relationship, but yet promotes, you know... The demise of monogamy. Uh, it also explores the true foundations of what marriage should be based on. Apparently, his marriage is based on that. And uh, he also talks about how, which is also somewhat paradoxical to me, he also talks about how being monogamous, in, this is in his book, uh, how being monogamous is not actually in our DNA to be that way. I mean, we're, we're aligning and making a commitment to an idea. And ideas are often flawed, especially the ones that are created by men. <laughs> so they need to be upgraded. Bad software, old software, time for new software. Before I get back to Noel, Dee Dee from ATL, I'd like to hear what you have to say. And if you have questions for Noel, now's your time to ask. Hey, sweetie, this is Dee from Atlanta. What, what I, up? The, uh, I'll be a monogamous. Not turn your radio down, sweetie. Okay, I'm going to turn my radio down. The all first right. thing that I want to know would always look good to you. It's not good for you. Mm. And then second of all, if you really want to do that, why get married in the first place? That's like if, if five people go jump off the bridge, am I going to go do it with them anyway? And, and I think what you said is like totally wrong. I mean, if you actually want to do that, why get married in the first place? If you just want to mess around with everybody else. And it is not wrong to not mess around with somebody else while you while you're in a relationship with somebody else. And these people that are coming on the radio thinking that it's okay to do that and it's not okay. It's not okay. It's not, well, it's not okay to do that. Dee, because, I, oh, okay. Go ahead. You got some more? Oh my God. 
I was listening to all these dumbass people on the phone that saying it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. It's not okay. Oh, D is not upset. Wrong, and it's not wrong if you don't have an outside relationship with somebody. It's not wrong because it's okay if you don't do that. And I just okay. can't believe all these people. I'm like, so then why She's do talking we like we have to? <laughs> at Starbucks together. <laughs> Dee Dee, sweetie, thank okay. you for the call. I so appreciate you for reaching out. I got to move on, but okay. I understand your sentiment. Thank you for calling. Uh, Andre from New Orleans. I need to hear what you think about this, man. Talk to me. Who that? Who that? New Orleans. <laughs> Andre, are you there? That's all he wanted to say was who that? Uh, you guys won. You, you guys won. That's great. Right. <laughs> Robert from Cali. You got something to say to Noel? Now's your time. Hello, hello. How we doing this evening? What up, man? All right, first time calling. I'm calling from California. Hey, uh, first of all, I want to commend Noel. Hey, I understand that I'm talking to him in a natural way. I'm not talking to him spiritually. You have to commend him because, I mean, I, I'm not married. I haven't been on this site. But at the same token, for married people, you know, why do you, you know, it gives an opportunity to, to, to people that are going through their indiscretions. They have the same other people, you know, birds of a feather flock together. So they have an opportunity to be with the people that, that want to do those type of things. So you have a safe environment for them in the aspect, hey, I can cheat with somebody, and they're not going to be damaged because I didn't have to lie to them because they're cheating just like I'm cheating. Now, I understand that's the natural. I mean, uh, Tina said something about it's the human nature. Yeah, it's the human nature, but that's why we all have a sinful human nature. And it's, in my opinion, it's a wrong nature. And that's why we have to, you know, we all have to give account for our own spiritual lives and what we do with our spiritual lives. And, and you know, you know, him, he's not contradicting because all he did was provided a site for them, regardless of him staying, being married, and being faithful to with his wife. That's not contradicting because he's only providing a service for people that want to do do or live that type of indiscretion. Do right. You, he he saw he saw a market. He saw a market, uh, brother. Right. I, I, I got to go, he's Robert. Influence, he's not influencing nobody, because you can't say he's influencing anybody with the site because he's not influencing. They're going to do what they're going to do without that. Right, I, and I agree with that. Uh, thank you for the call, Robert. I'm glad you reached out. I'm here every Thursday. You can call any time. Noel, do you want to address some of the sentiment that was shared by these uh, yeah, last few callers? The, the, last, the, the caller, the, the lady who called before, I think her name was D, you know, was asking why people get married. I think, though, they get married with the best of intentions. They truly do. They, they're in love, and they, they intend to be faithful and do all the right things. But, man, life and marriage slap you upside the head, and it's not as easy as all that. And we, we oversimplify how, you know, it's going to be a walk in the park. And when the going gets tough, you know, people tend to go. You know, my site, for example, there is a direct correlation, though, with how many sign-ups I get in the community as the unemployment rate rises. So Michigan, places that are hit hard right now in the economy, we are through the roof. And that's, there's a real reason for it. You know, stress at home, you know, leads to economic stress at home, leads to fights, discussions. It's hard to turn on the intimacy. And so when you're already feeling down about yourself, you know, if you're kind of getting into battle with your partner, you're going to look for someone who can bring you some comfort. And, and so that's just the nature of who we are as people. It's just that people do go into marriages with the best of intent. It's not like that. It's just that life ends up treating them a little differently, and not everyone copes with it the same way. That's true. I mean, if you're married, if you've been married for 10 or 15 years to Nagatha Christie, and, you know, you know, at some point you're going to be like, you know, enough of this battle axe. I'm going to go somewhere else and do something. Uh, John Gray was on our show before and said somewhat of the same thing. He said... Uh, when women complain, and this is as it relates to nagging, because that's one of the reasons why people try to justify or intellectualize or rationalize cheating. When women complain, men will say, well, she complains a lot and, you know, all of that, it bothers me, so I'm going to go out and find somebody that appreciates me. Well, this guy came on the show, John Gray, that is, and said simply that when women complain, just the way that they communicate, it lowers testosterone levels in men. Oh, no, it's true. There, there's a bi biological impact to that kind of, quote-unquote, nagging. And it's true. If a, if a man's out there working extremely hard, you know, trying to be good, being home, being a good parent, and, and, and working really on dedicated family time or whatever, and is still 
getting grief and is still not getting the intimacy, they don't have a very you know long fuse at that point, to be honest with you. Right. And so their view is, you know what, I'm doing all this for my family. i got to do something for myself. And there's, you know who played on that better than even Ashley Madison? Who? Let's remember Las Vegas. What was their theme for the last decade? What happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. What were they telling the world? Come to our town, get a hall pass. Don't tell your spouse what's going on. Just come here and be who you need to be and then go home and suck it up and, and take it on the chin. And you know what? But, but no, you know what? The only problem with that is what happens online doesn't always stay online. It's a great point, but you know, that's why we built Ashley Madison. The entire service is encapsulated within the Ashley Madison community. With the push of a button, we delete all historic records. There's no cell phone logs. There's no tracing elements. There's no voice messages left. Everything is on your Ashley Madison account, and boom, it's gone if you want to make it gone, if you want us to make it gone. There's no way to access it from a third party. So really, you've mitigated your ability to get caught. One of the things that... So you've got, you've, you've got uh, on your site, it says you have two types of uh, information. You have non-PPI and personal PPI or, or, you know, personal identifying information versus non-personal identifying information. We have no personal identifying. I get asked all the time, though, what celebrities are on there, whatever. Sure, they're all on there. I would never know. We never ask your name. The billing is not done under Ashley Madison. The entire service is anonymous. It's totally discreet, and then it's totally hidden. Your photos are under lock and key. There isn't a way to be discovered unless you leave your computer open with your page there or your password there for your on your partner's you know the computer you share with your wife or your husband which happens a lot it does <laughs> you, know, don't be subconscious. you know what happens though truthfully it's subconscious people are so upset with their relationship they can't even figure out how to communicate their displeasure with it they can't figure out how to fix it they go and have an affair and actually want to get discovered because they use the infidelity as finally the conversation point to say hey do we really want this relationship anymore? If we do, we better change it. If not, we should leave. So let so me ask be, you this. Yeah. Let, let me ask you this. How many relationship mutinies are you and your website responsible for? Well, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I'll, I'll be honest. I mean, you got to know it's happening, right? you got to well, know I'm that. I'm going to tell you what happens. For the most part, I genuinely believe people come there, find what they need for a period of time, and probably go back to their partners. That's what they're seeking. That's what it fulfills. But I, there's, there's a woman who wrote a book. You can find it on Amazon, The Ashley Madison Diaries. She got married at 18. Why? Because she was pregnant. She thought she was doing the right thing. Ten years in an abusive, miserable marriage. She didn't know what to do. She didn't have the economic wherewithal to leave, or so she believed. She went on the service, met a man who was also miserable. They fell in love. They both left their partners. They got married. She wrote a book about it. Is that going to happen? Yes. Does it happen a lot? I doubt it. But everything happens. on When you have five million people, though, if there's any permutation you can think of, it's going to happen. Wow. And, and again, AshleyMadison.com is not responsible for, or it didn't create infidelity. And what it's doing is what a lot of websites have done. This is a niche market. It's a niche, you know, just little well, you angle. You know who my, my biggest competitor is? There's no other infidelity website. Nobody has the Who's your biggest or, competitor? It's Facebook. Wow. Facebook ha is responsible right now in divorce proceedings and cited more often than any other factor alone. 20% of divorces being filed in America use the word Facebook in it right now. That's a recent stat. It's just, it is the fastest growing segment on Facebook is married women. You know, there, there, there's a lot of reasons for it, its success. And one of those reasons is the ability to reach out to past lovers and, you know, boyfriends and girlfriends. Wow who wow. are often there to say, hey, you still look great. Hey, we should get together and give that validation back to that person who's not feeling great. That's true. That's true. Relationship status is complicated. Uh, uh, again, the other uh, niche uh, niche uh, social networking sites out there, I mean, nobody's giving these guys grief. But well, they're, no, no but hold on. Let me, hold on. No, let, me, let me give a little list here. We got hdate.com. This is a social networking site for people who have herpes. Never heard of that. We got stdmatch.com. These are sites where, I mean, it's a niche market. Hey, you're carrying something, I'm carrying something. We get together on this site, we don't have to talk about it. Whereas if I got something and I'm out in the general public, okay. that is something I'm responsible to disclose. I'm responsible for disclosing that. Whereas on hdate.com, I don't have to because I already know I got what you got. That's a niche market. Unless you're some How come people aren't like coming at the founders of these people, right? Well, maybe people saying. are. I, I don't know. I, I, They're they, not coming they, at them like you. They're not on Tyra, and the dude told you on Tyra, he felt like whooping your ass. I'll tell you why, because there's something out there called the marital industrial complex. It makes billions of dollars a year telling people to buy self-help books, to visit psychiatrists, social, social workers, 
to fix their marriage, and they need a villain. You know what that villain is? It's infidelity. You know who represents that villain better than anybody ever? It's Noel Biederman. So that's why that happens. Noel Biederman, you better get your paper, man. I ain't <laughs> mad at you. Ladies and gentlemen, we're about to take a quick break. Voice of Reason, Foxhole Radio, Sirius 106, XM 149, Cyber Infidelity for Cell is our topic tonight. A discussion with the founder of AshleyMadison.com. Please continue to call in. 877-2106-106 is the number to dial. Chantel from Cali, C Max from from Texas, ja, uh, Jaquez from South Carolina. Check it. We will be back in a quick moment. I'm going to get to you. Hang on the line. I'll see you in a minute. Peace. Schizo. You are now tuned in to the voice of reason. The big homie Zo is your host this evening. Huh? So Williams, man of many topics. Talk about anything. Ain't nothing out of pocket. Whether your partner is after you for profit. Or how to tell if your relationship is toxic. Not I just like the beat and we drop it. This so funny ass nigga is a Gnostic. So tune in for wisdom and jokes. Talk about anything from fans to medicinal smoke. <laughs> so if you got a problem and it's an answer you're seeking, tune in to the Foxhole's Voice of Reason. Yeah. Foxhole Radio, Voice of Reason, Zoe Williams, Sirius 106 XM 149, Cyber Infidelity for Sale is our topic tonight with the founder of AshleyMadison.com, Noel Biederman. He's also the author of a book called Cheaters Prosper, How Infidelity Will Save Modern Marriage. He's saying the social template and construct of traditional marriage is starting to erode at a rapid pace. If you do a little research into sociology, you'll understand that... Uh, when you look at a traditional person, when I say a traditional person, I mean a person who follows, you know, I go to church every Sunday, uh, you know, I work nine to five, uh, who believes in the head of the household business. A lot of those kind of people, whether it be male or female, are very, very violent in relationships, you know, uh, and we've done, you know, we've done the research, especially with men. Uh, those are the guys who think traditionally in the sense of, hey, if my wife is making more money than me, uh, that's a threat to my role as the head of the household. So when we look at some of these traditional belief systems, they are inherently flawed on some level. And Biederman has found a niche in there to, you know, you know kind of galvanize this movement and get these people who are going to cheat anyway to go to a particular place. So check this out. If you guys want to tweet me. Get at me at Zoe Williams, or you could tweet me at Foxhole Radio. If you have questions for Noel, we want to hear them. Before I get back to Noel, let's do this really quickly. C Max from Texas, if you have something to say, now's the time to do it. Hey, what's going on? I'm a college student, and it's interesting because we were just talking about this in class. So I'm going to go the other way. Um, you say that yes, there's no paper trail, and you know they can't really get caught, but the fact that it's Ashley Madison itself, if uh, a couple decides to get mad and beat the other person or kill them, what kind of legalities do you guys, you know, mm. take uh, take responsibility in? Also, <laughs> I find it interesting that you're commoditizing something that you really don't do yourself. So what if somebody said, "Hey, I'm gonna, I know guys who sleep with married women who are not even unhappy." <laughs> Let's not try to find women who are happy in marriage. Let's think of some things that they really like and try to force them into a, you know, uh, uh, affair, even though they weren't necessarily unhappy. What I mean, somebody could just actually say, hey, I want to do that. I mean, you started this. I don't think anybody would really think that this could take place before it even started. So what would you think about something like that? Hey, C. Max, thank you for the call. Uh, well, no. So, so definitely, listen. There, there's, there are some people. I, I don't want to give the impression that the only people who come to Ashley Madison are people who are miserable in the relationship. I'm just suggesting that's the vast majority. There's definitely some people out there who love the thrill of the chase, who love new, who love excitement, and find you know sneaking around fulfilling in that regard. And so we'll pursue adultery, kind of come hell or high water. There's definitely those people out there. Uh, that, that's that's 100% accurate. That's part of it. 
As for Lee Agalis, listen, you know, that, that's the way divorce is kind of, you know, no fault now. And, and so it, there's no vicarious liability. If someone, you know, has an affair and then takes it out and breaks the law and, and gets physical with, with their partner as a result of it, it's them who's committing the crime, not the hotel room that they got together on, not the cell phone company, you know, because they use cell phones to speak to each other, not the right. website they met on. Just, right. That's not how the law works. You can't, see t you can't sue T-Mobile. Correct. Because of the text messages that were being sent back and forth, yeah. and Holiday, your Holiday Inn would be in big trouble then. Right, Holiday Inn would be out of business. So uh, your site is also for single people as well, correct? Well, yeah. Listen, on the male side, I got to be honest with you, it's almost ninety-nine percent married or attached men. And we use the word attached because you know there's a lot of people living together in significant relationships that haven't actually had a civil or religious ceremony. But you know, from our perspective, they're in a significant relationship, and so they're they're welcome. But on the female side, you know. Maybe 30, 25 percent, 30 percent of the women. And that's why there's a lot of public photos. They're mistresses. They're viewed. And you know what? Let me just say this, Noel. I was watching those uh, interviews and news interviews from all over the country as it relates to AshleyMadison.com, the Super Bowl ad, and all of these things. And the perception is is that women don't cheat as much as men do. It's like, oh, women are cheating now. Women have been cheating forever. Let's but not. I think what, well, I think what, Come on. what they're really realizing is that infidelity has always been very closely related to opportunities, though. And so the first big jump you really had in female infidelity was when they entered the workforce because now they had their quote-unquote work husbands. They had people they were creating emotional bonds with. This next jump where women are catching up to men is because of the digital age. They now are one click away from an affair, whether it's on my service or the other ones we've mentioned before. So they have an even playing field now with men, and that's why you're seeing women's infidelity rates hit the 50s, and ultimately it will catch up to men. There's no doubt about it. You see that? Hey, they got, they got access. Uh, hotness is in proximity. Let's get active. What are the numbers for AshleyMadison.com? I hear a lot. In your book, it says 4.5. In another interview I saw, it said 5. In another interview, I saw 3.5. 3. How many people are actually on the site, and how much money are you making annually? Yeah, I mean, it grows every every day, right? And so, you know, the, the, the book was written uh, or published, uh, you know, about a half year ago, and so now we're over 5.3 million members, but back then we were probably at... 4.5. We, we, we grow exceedingly fast because we're wildly successful. And as for, you know, our revenues, you know, we talk about it at, at Avid Life Media. We make over 30 million bucks a year, right? Off come of on, don't, come on now. Come on. Uh, who's mad at him for making $30 million a year? Somebody uh, call mad. me right now. I know you ain't mad. I know you're not mad. Somebody well, call. Mad. I need America. a reverend to call. This is the beautiful thing of America. Everyone should be so proud that they're in that country, and they should be looking for the same kind of opportunities. Every one of your callers should be hanging, you know, hanging up the phone instead, thinking about how do I create a great business on the changing tide of, of American popularity or, or, or relationships. That's their opportunity. Wow. Chantel from Cali, I need to hear what you think about this conversation. Yeah, I'm mad about it because... I mean, basically, see, he's just saying that it's okay to cheat. And, and to me, it's not okay to cheat. You know, it's like, what is this day and age coming to where, you know, uh, it's basically just telling the guy that, you know, or the female that it's cool to do that. You know, And then you're going to pay for it? Shoot, if I'm a cheat, I'm going to go in, out and find somebody, use my mouthpiece, use my looks, and not pay for it and cheat. Why am I going to pay for it? Well, the paying part comes in is just that, you know, I'm a for-profit business, so if you want to talk to other members, you buy my credits. And $49 to buy these credits to meet 20-plus members seems like a better investment than, you know, 40000 in a divorce. So, you know, in that regard, it makes a ton of sense on the micro level. And just cheaper to keep her. It's cheaper to keep her. Yeah, 5 million members. And I'm not saying it's, quote-unquote, okay to cheat. What I'm saying is that oversimplifies it. What is a person to do? If they're a woman, they've been married 10 years, and for the last two years, their husband hasn't touched them. They love and care about their family. They don't know what to do. Are you saying to that woman, for the next 30 years plus of her life, she should just live without sex, without intimacy? That's impossible. That's just not reasonable. And so you, that poor person is in a non-winnable situation. And so I built a service for her, for her where she can go there and find some guy who can create that need, fulfill that void, and hopefully make her happy. Well, so, also, like, why be miserable? I mean, if it's that bad, I mean, don't make him miserable because you're miserable. I mean, compromise and, and, and find an end to it. I mean, because... Yeah, but an end to it means that you're saying, my personal sex life is more important than raising our kids together, than the family... That's what you're saying. 
That's a very selfish act to say but that. That's what that, you're that's saying. Cool. That's what you're. That's what you're saying. I'm gonna go ahead and cheat. Yeah, you know, because I need to be cheating satisfied. Is, cheating is the less selfish act from my perspective. Walking away from your family because you're not getting some in the bedroom. That's the selfish act. No, no, I don't. I don't, I don't agree with that. Okay. Wow. Uh, anybody else want to go at him? Now's your time. Eight seven seven two one zero six one zero six is the number to dial. Celebrity. I mean, uh, cyber. Infidelity for sale. We're on the phone right now with Noel Biederman. This guy is the founder of AshleyMadison.com. 877-2106-106 is the number to dial. I'm Zoe Williams, Voice of Reason, Foxhole Radio, Sirius 106, XM 149. We're about to take another quick break. I'm telling you right now. Now's the time to get your calls in. If you agree with him, please call in and let us know. But if you disagree, we want to hear from you. I'll be back in a moment. Peace. Ladies and gentlemen, the late, great Michael Jackson, this place, Hotel, Foxhole Radio, Sirius 106 XM 149, cyber infidelity, cyber adultery for sale. I'm on the phone or I'm on the line right now with um, Noel Biederman, one of the coldest pimps I've ever seen in my life. If Pimp and Ken was on right now, let me just say, uh, Noel, we had one of the, the most famous pimps in the world on our show last week. He wrote a book called Pimpology, The 48 Laws of Game. And it. he would tell you right now that the game is to be told, is to be sold, not told. He would tell you right now, purse first and ass last. You are pimping at a high level of pimptitude that no one has ever seen. Anyway, let's move on to our callers. We got a whole lot of them, Noel, so be patient. We're going to get to you, and we're going to let you respond to them as well. Andre from New Orleans, let me hear you, man. Talk to me. Hey, Zoe, love the show. Mr. Biederman, I want to applaud you for your, for your opportunistic mentality. Everybody's bashing Mr. Biederman now. He is not creating adultery. A person is going to cheat no matter what. And and I had to disagree with something you said earlier about uh, the Internet and, and influencing people to cheat. Mm -hmm. I, I have to disagree with that because if a person is influenced by that website, then they're weak-minded in the first place. Most people are, though. Continue. You, you're right. I said, I've been. Then you I've agree with, with me. My wife. I've been with my wife for 21 years. Never cheated. Temptation was there, but you have to be strong. I found my soulmate, but everybody doesn't have that soulmate. They get married early. They get married for the wrong reasons, and they live their life miserable. A lot of people don't have the financial means to get out of a a, 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 a marriage. True. 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 And, yeah. And it creates hostility in the household. I would rather someone go to the website, explore all the options, and if you can't do it, if you, if you don't have the financial means to get out, try to work something out where, hey, we live together, we have to support each other, and and that's it. But people, that's the problem. Everybody wants to blame someone else for their shortcomings. Well, thank you, Dre. I appreciate the call, man. I'm here every Thursday. Reach out to me, man. Uh, again. When we talk about this thing, people don't realize getting married in American society is like, in my opinion, and you could disagree with me all day in America if you want to, but getting married in, 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 a, in American society is almost like buying a car. It's like you desire to have a new home. I desire to have a house. I desire to have a car. People don't understand that the symbol of marriage means something more. The symbol always represents something bigger. It's a semantic for something bigger. Most people are after the symbol and not what the symbol symbolizes. So again, you don't really have real love. You just say, well, it's about time that I get married. I'm, I'm about at that age. I've done everything that I was supposed to do. Now it's time to do this without really understanding what that is. You understand? So like the brother just said, some people get married too soon. Some people still don't have a full understanding of who and what they are, their likes, their dislikes. Some people probably have never lived with somebody, so when they get married, they live with somebody, and then they recognize, hey, I don't really like this movement. So again, we are programmed to want to participate in cultural things with 
not always knowing what that thing is. Sometimes we don't see the flaw in it until we're actually in the situation. Uh, who else we got on the line? John from Missouri. Show me. Let's go. Hey, what's going on, Zoe? Love your show. Appreciate it, man. Hey, uh, I love the website. It's a great idea. Um, I got to agree with you on the, the marriage thing because uh, it's a, a lot of people don't look at it as reality. It's, it's this fantasy. It's supposed to be perfect, this knight in shining armor type thing. And, you know, it's like you said, people get married for the wrong reasons sometimes. And, and uh, you know, people are going to cheat no matter what, whether it's a website or anything. So, I mean, I've been married 17 years. We've had our problems. Have you and, cheated? And uh, we, we've, what's that? Have you cheated? Yes, sir, I have, and so has she. And, and I think one and of it's the all good. The, yeah, and one of the biggest things is that people don't realize is sometimes cheating, it, it'll do two things. It'll either make you realize what you got, or it'll make you realize that, hey, you're in a situation that you don't want to be in anymore. That's right. You know, I, I and, think, uh, and, and, you know, I don't, you know, people bashing uh, the man for having his website. Hey, people are going to, one thing people have a problem with in a relationship or a marriage, they want to control the other person. Hey, if they're going to do it, they're going to do it. Right, right. I agree 100%, man. Thank you for the call. I appreciate it. Uh, who else we got? Uh, Jock from South Carolina. Let me hear what you got to say, man. Yeah, how you doing, Joe? What's happening, man? Hey, how's it going, uh, Mr. No, uh, what is it, Biederman? No Biederman. Uh, how you doing, though? No. First thing I want to say, I'm a business owner myself. Um, I just wanted to congratulate you on your your creative process to be able to come up and capitalize on things that people are going to do regardless of what. So I want to uh, applaud you for just having a voice of reason for people in American society to voice their opinion. Appreciate it, man. Now, now, now saying that, this is what I, I really called to say is, the greatest war to me and anyone in American society or any society can agree to is the war of the mind. People mm. have to realize that we're all going to be different. We, we, we were created to think. We're all natural scientists, explorers. So to, to, to look at another beautiful woman or beautiful man, for the, the, the caller earlier, the woman, she said, well, she thought it was wrong. But there is some kind of process that she's went to mentally or went through mentally uh, and, and cheated, you know, whether or not she did it physically, she did it in a mental or spiritual realm. You know, she's probably touched herself before and thought about, you know, Denzel Washington, you know. So so what I'm saying is <laughs> we got to understand, man, that no one has perfection, okay? And, and, and we're raised with these biblical teachings to say that, you know, this is how we're supposed to think. You know, your mother and your father can't make you. You have to learn to discover yourself. And in that journey of life, it takes you years. It takes you the first 5 to 10 to 20 to 30 for you to start realizing your mistakes and the things that you want, you as an individual, want and want not to do. Well, well I, I, I hate to cut you off, Brother Minister. I, I appreciate the call, but we've got to move on to the, to the uh, you know, we, the show is winding down. I appreciate what you were saying. It was very deep, very heavy, and people need to listen to that. I'm here every Thursday. Call me and let me know what you think on these other topics that I got cooking. But let's go back to the topic. Cyber infidelity for sale. Cyber adultery. We've got Noel Biederman on, AshleyMadison.com. Very controversial site, however, very lucrative. 30 million a year, five plus million participants. This is a, a, a sector of American culture that we can't just turn a blind eye to. And I personally hate the hypocrisy. We, uh, you, you hear these people on these interviews as it pertains to AshleyMadison.com, and everybody's, oh, that's a shame. Oh my God, I can't believe that somebody would capitalize on cheating. But these be the same people that get caught. I mean, think, John Edwards could have been our president. This dude got love children. We all cheat. Everybody's cheating. Why is it such a big deal when somebody comes along and says, hey, let me turn a quarter on that? That's what a pimp does. Noel Biederman is a cyber pimp. I'm going to label you that, Noel. I'm going to the next caller. Joel from NYC. Let me hear from you. How are you guys doing today? What up, man? So, 
for a thing that um this thing can backfire on us. Say again, no. What goes around comes. You think it's gonna backfire on you? What goes around comes around. You think somebody gonna be out there putting some lead to your wife? Right. The the question of karma, no. He's asking you directly. Do you think what you're doing, what you're helping to facilitate from, what you're profiting off of, do you think that's going to come back to bite you in the ass? I, I guess I, all I can really say to that is, you know, how many products and services in America do we know are not good for us, from the fast food we eat to, you know, cosmetic companies telling young girls that they got to look different and lose weight and all that kind of stuff? I, I think that that's, uh, that's a nice notion, but it, it, it's probably just that, just a notion. Wow. Uh, let me do this. Thank you for the call, my man. I appreciate you reaching out. We'll be here every Thursday. Uh, we're about to take another quick break, but continue to call in. You got to get your information or you got to get your, your questions in to Noel because he's here to deal with this. 877-2106-106 is the number to dial. Zoe Williams, Voice of Reason, Foxhole Radio. I'll be back in a quick second. Peace. Michael Jackson says it's human nature. Is it human nature to cheat? Is it human nature to commit infidelities? Adultery. Tonight's topic, cyber infidelity for sale with Noel Biederman. Uh, and Noel Biederman, of course, is an author, author of a book, uh, Cheaters Prosper. Uh, you guys should go check that out. Uh, How Infidelity Will Save the Modern Marriage. And he's also the owner and founder of the website AshleyMadison.com. Uh, Noel, we got more callers, and uh, I'm going to let you address them uh, right now. Big Nasty, Indianapolis. This better not be Big Nasty that I know. Yeah, what's going on, man? How you doing? Big man, Nasty, what up, what? Hey, you got it, you got it, man. Just kicking like man down, baby. Yeah, word up, word up. Uh, you got a question uh, for my man? Yeah, I wanted to ask him on, um, you know, what? tell him that uh, I don't think all money is good money with the profits that he's making and stuff like that. As far as that part right there, and then I also want to ask him, what does he think that his kids will think when they grow up and everything that he's profit off an of infidelity for his family? How would he? How would they feel about that? They're probably going to be very happy that they're able to go to private school and they're, <laughs> and they're attending an Ivy League college. They're probably going to be excited about it. No. Great question. I think it's a great question because you know I do have two young children and and I will. Be just open and honest with them. The only way to be with children, they're way smarter than we give them credit for. They don't have to fear the topic of sex with children. I'm going to talk to them about it and tell them about relationships. They're going to be able to see the difference between me, the entrepreneur, even if I am paid like LeBron James, or, you know, me, the, the family guy. And so hopefully I'll be yeah. able to articulate why I built the business and how it helped our family, and uh, I'm hoping they'll be really good with it. But, you know, I may have to face a lot of explaining to I, I don't know. They're going to be their own independent thinkers, but uh, I, I will be honest with them. Wow. Thanks. Uh, Big Nasty, thanks for the call. Lorenzo, Houston, let me hear what you have to say to Noel. Hey, Zo, no, thank y'all for taking my call, man. This is a hour of the night, man. Hey, let me, let me explain to the females this way, the one that disagree with Noel. Uh, listen, okay, uh, when a man usually uh, cheats on a woman, uh, after he finished uh, uh, taking care of his family, you don't want to just wash off and leave, okay? You don't want to sit there and call them and stuff like that, okay? So which takes... Little, no time, right? Okay, so I have a 19 year old daughter, 17 year old son, 9 year old son, and a 4 year old daughter, okay? What, with the rise of child molestation, uh, step parents killing uh, the, uh, their spouse's kids, it would be very selfish of me to over uh, our queen to leave my kids, not saying that my wife will choose my like that, but the wife is used the last one to know. So why would I take a chance on leaving my wife and have a predator come in and uh, and do something terrible to my kids that can affect them for the rest of their life or shorten their life? So uh, it is easier for me to go ahead and take care of my business real fast and still be happy. Not let everybody know and keep my family intact. You know, and, 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 and do it that way. It's not what you do, though. It is how you do it. Thanks for taking my call, though. Thank you. Uh, Noel? Yeah, well, he touched on, you know, a point that I would just kind of articulate slightly differently. The one piece of research we know out of America, kids raised by a two-parent household just have more advantages in life and do better 
better in school, better with their jobs than people raised in a single parent household. They just have more opportunities. And so if we believe that's the cornerstone of America, then we really have to revisit how we approach divorce and what's acceptable within a marriage, and that includes sex. Wow. Uh, let's just do this real quick. We got one more caller here. Keys from Cleveland. Hey, what's going on? Hey, Keys. What up, man? I got, I got this. You know, I just want to say this. Everybody talks about cheating like it's this big thing. You know what I mean? Like it, it's never been happening. Like, you know, you watch the news, people getting killed in the news. You know, it's just that it's more publicized now. And you've made a website where these people... Uh, maybe they feel comfortable doing you know some people got an uh, issue with being comfortable i feel like time just repeats itself if you if you go back into christianity you go back into the jewish you go to any of them they all cheated okay and people making this big thing out of you know women always say well you guys are cheating this that now the blah 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 hey you gotta do what you gotta do because right. the first thing the most thing about life is to be happy if you're not living your life happy with somebody that you're with you know most of these people like you said they go out they just they married people for the, all the wrong reasons Guess what? Mm -hmm. Later on in the line, they're not happy. Make right. yourself happy in order to make somebody else happy. Because if right. two people happy, guess what? They're not going to cheat on each other. Right, 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 right. Hey, I appreciate the call, Keys from Cleveland. Thank you very much. Uh, Noel, let me just say this really quickly, man. Being in a relationship, dude, is is like anything. I mean, like uh, if you're if you're a mechanic, you got to know every nook and cranny of that car in order to be considered a good mechanic. The same thing applies in relationships. You've got to know every nook and cranny of yourself in order to be functional in a relationship, right? So most people don't know themselves to the level or to the degree that they should know in order to be able to be accountable for the negative things that they bring to a relationship. But a lot of times we get in a relationship because the image of the relationship creates opportunity for us. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? We got to look right in order to be accepted in certain circles. Do you not agree with that? There's definitely a status to being married in America. Your community treats you different. Your workplace treats you different. And so people gravitate towards it, and they tend to do it sometimes for the wrong reasons. Right. So it's like a jacket. It's like, uh, let me put on the marriage yeah, coat. It's a sport coat. I agree. <laughs> yeah, let me put on that so I could, I mean, listen to uh, what Shaquille O'Neal said. Many years ago when he got, well, not many, he was only married for six years. But the reason he got married was, I got children with this woman, and it just doesn't look right. Yeah. So I need to go get married. But that didn't stop him from cheating. That didn't stop him from doing all of the things that he wanted to get out with. And that's part of what's changing right now. People are getting more comfortable with people choosing to have children but not marrying the people they have the children with. And as that becomes more common, there'll be a de-emphasis on, you know, monogamy. And I think 20, 30 years from now, people will look back at me and my website and say, oh, what was the big deal? Kind of the way they look back now at Hugh Hefner and Playboy and say, so what? You wanted to put a magazine out with some topless chicks. You know, who cares? But back then, oh, my God, the guy had to go to the Supreme Court to fight for the right. Right, right. It's just like you said on that one interview when you said, uh, if this was an interracial dating site, no one would bat, bat an eye. But 40 years ago, people would right. be up in arms, right? I, I still use that when, you know, ABC says we're not going to take your ad, and I get all huffy, and I say, that's ridiculous. If I was running an interracial dating service and you said that, you know, you would have real problems on your hands. And so you're just behind the times, guys. I'm just ahead of it. And so that's why I'm successful as a business person, and ultimately society will catch up to me. The only thing that bothers me, Noel, is at some point, are you going to offer the open relationship situation to your wife? You know, infidelity isn't about open relationships, right? Infidelity is, is a situation where it's not going right in your sex life, and I suppose you're faced with the opportunity. Go talk to your partner about it. Say, hey, we've got to do something. I've got to be able to, you know, have dalliances. We bring someone else into the bedroom. But people are so terrified of that conversation and the repercussions of that conversation, how they're going to be looked at, that they're actually more comfortable straying. They're more comfortable straying and doing it behind their partner's back. And if you look around, again, around the world, there's a lot of places where people say, listen, if my partner cheats, I don't even want to know about it. I'm just better off not knowing about it as long as they still yeah. believe they love me, raise our yeah. kids. And so yeah. it's only in America. We have to know everything and know everything because, oh, we can't um, deal with the deceit. And I just don't know, again, if you, if you canvass these other cultures, they might just have a better paradigm than what we've currently got. Wow. So you say uh, America is behind the time as it relates to monogamy and relationship. Let me yeah, move to this we're, next we're, caller. We're, we're way too 
We're way too puritanical when it comes to sex. We think it's a dirty word. Whoa, whoa, whoa. No. Hold on. Hold on. Say that slower. Puritanical. The Puritans. Go ahead. Just because yeah, our callers want to know what that means. Come on. Well, it just it just means we, we we grew up with a culture. There was a culture that landed in America. You know that built what America is, and a lot of that work ethic was important, or we wouldn't have been the most successful country to ever exist. But mm -hmm. the flip side of that is. We had real discomfort around sex. We had real discomfort with how we treated women for a long time. They were a real second-class citizen. They were a possession. And so we still haven't shed those notions. We're still really uncomfortable with sex. To us, to a lot of people, there's notions like if your woman is with another man, oh, my God, she's been defiled. You've been, it, it just, and those notions come from that puritanical notion because sex was a dirty word. And so we have to shed that. We truly do, or we can't move forward. Our, our friends in Europe get a lot of things wrong, but on this one, they get it right. So, Noel, let me go to this final caller. Janine from Cali, it's your time. Hey, Wrap it up. What's going on? I just want to say this real quick and simple. When people go and they use the platform that he, that he put out there to cheat, it's just an excuse. If sex is the problem in your relationship, then that's the problem. Is it really communication? If you really love that person and it's just the sex, I mean, what are you missing? The orgasm? A man can have an orgasm by himself. You know, I keep it real with my it's husband. It's better with someone now. else. Excuse me. That doesn't matter. It, 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 what, it, it's still the same. Oh, it does matter. Excuse me. You're still, well, then at that point in time, then it's not just the sex. It's probably the intimacy or something that you're lacking with your wife that you really want to have with another person. And if that's the case, then maybe you need to go ahead and move on. I've kept it real open with my husband. This is what it is. We love each other, but my marriage is also like a business. And so we have things that we do. He works, I work, we bring things to the table. I'm on a come up. I'm on a mission. We're trying to have things. And I dare you take money that we've earned and go and spend it so that you can go and sleep with another woman. If there's something that you need for me to do, then, boo-boo, you need to bring that here, and you need to let me do whatever it is you do because that $49 or whatever it is that you're charging, I'll gladly take that from my husband and do the whatever it is I need to do. I'll set the chrome off his head. What? But what Maybe if I'm what he needs... But <laughs> I heard you say you'll suck the chrome off his head, but what if what he needs you to do is be quiet because <laughs> i could tell you have got a strong personality i could tell that if your husband came in sideways you would give him the business <laughs> <laughs> what if it's hey be quiet you where'd she go i wanted to answer that no i gotta tell you this is the truth of the matter it's not just the lack of sex what it also is the kind of sex. We hear all the time about guys, they probably watch too much adult content. They think everybody's out there swinging, having threesomes, oral. They think they're getting everything, uh, you know, that, that the, uh, that, that can be offered under the sun. And their wife is just into missionary. They're, they're, they're moving on. If they're not getting what they want, that's also why people strip. So let me do this really quickly. I want you in, in 30 seconds to tell people where they can buy your book. I mean, just give me your spill really quickly on why AshleyMadison.com is a service that America needs. So, yeah, the book is just CheatersProsperTheBook.com. They can check it out, buy it. If they email me personally, I'll send them a copy on me. Happy to do that for any of your listeners. They've been great. As for Ashley Madison, listen, if you're struggling with your intimacy in your life, go on the site, try it out. That's all I'm saying. You might find it's not for you. You know how many people, though, probably have realized, you know what? This isn't for me. I don't. I can't be an adulterer. It's not going to work. In that sense, I've let a million people kind of test the waters, and they've never had to get into the sack with somebody. So it's a valuable litmus test in and of itself. But you know, it, it's there. There's a community, and they all know what you're going through, and that's the real power of it. Man, ladies and gentlemen, Zoe Williams, voice of reason, Noel Biederman was my guest tonight. Man, I so appreciate you for coming on and being so candid about this hot button topic that is all over the media right now i really appreciate you sharing in this information i think you cleared up a lot of uh misconceptions about your site and what it offers and and really you you did yourself well tonight uh i'm zoe williams voice of reason foxhole radio sirius 106 xm 149 and this is my final thought on the issue this guy didn't create uh infidelity what he did was create a site to capitalize on, on the economy that's there. And I think that's a smart business move. However, 
when we we have to understand our society is not the most educated society in the world and when things get out the bag like when the cat's out the bag in this society it really influences people in positive and negative ways across the board so you got a lot of people out there that are offended because they're holding on to the old way but listen to this you're not going to have a good relationship just because you got married relationships will reveal to you the flaws in your character if you don't have a firm understanding of who and what you are I don't care how old you are when you get married if you are self unaware your relationships will create opportunities and situations that will make Ashley Madison relevant to you you see that figure out why you're in a marriage figure out why you want to be married figure out who you are as a human being and I guarantee you your relationships will be more fulfilling they won't be based on a social template that will ultimately get old and die out I'm Zoe Williams and that's my final thought ladies and gentlemen Zoe Williams voice of reason foxhole radio I will see you guys next week when I do whose responsibility is it to enforce the use of a condom a man or a woman I'll see you next week. Holla.